back here on the Choose 954 podcast, episode 33. Local writer, docent, art supporter, Sally O'Dell. If you didn't know about Choose 954, uh, we started a social movement to cultivate culture and community here in Broward County, where I'm from, in an effort to keep people to know of all the great things that are going on, uh, to connect them, and make it a better place to live, not just a better place to vacation. The point of the podcast is to connect you with incredible people like her doing amazing things in the community. Uh, and if you didn't know, Choose 954 is the social movement and outreach arm of the United Group, which is a modern marketing and advertising firm started by my partner, uh, Mr. Andrew Martino, that's also behind Art for Lardale, for Lardale Art Design Week, the 1000 Mermaid Art for Street Project, and a lot of other initiatives uh, within the community that we're proud to support while we can stay close to the community. So without much further ado, why don't you tell us about yourself, Ms. Kelly Oh my god. At a high level. <laughs> yes, very high level. Um, well, hello. So, uh, I've been coming down here uh, since I was a wee child and loved my vacations down here with my family. They were some of the best memories of my life. We would body surf, you know. Um, it, it was just so much fun. And I've lived in very big markets. I am from Fort Wayne, Indiana, but I was a French major, so there's not a lot to do in Fort Wayne, Indiana as a French major. Um, and I also love the English language. So I went to graduate school um, at Northwestern for journalism. And little by little, I started to move around. I lived in Washington, D.C., um, of course, Chicago, Greenwich, Connecticut, um, New York City, where I'm a travel writer. Um, something took me to London. Uh, I was there for about six months. Um, deaths of my parents kind of urged me to go to different places. I moved to Paris, where I began to speak French and worked in um, corporate communications and launched a 20 country blog. Um, so that was lots of fun. And then uh, I did come back to America and uh, continued to work in public relations and advertising in New York City. And I'll be frank with you, Evan, um, when my mom died, um, this was already three years ago, when she died, the grief was horrible. And I loved being down here with her. And I just needed to kind of tone it down a notch. And when I go swimming in the ocean, I feel her presence. And I also knew that the city was growing and not just for vacationers. And I had a hunch that I'd meet some pretty cool people. Well, that answered the question of why you choose 954. Yes, it did. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, and you touched on a little bit about your uh, previous life as, in advertising as a travel writer. Um, so tell us a little bit now about Sally and Florida. Great. So I do two different things. Uh, well, I do many things, but um, for income, I am a freelance journalist. I write for Lifestyle Media Group, which publishes Lifestyle Magazine, and South Florida Business and Wealth. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I also cover advertising and technology trends for a new site called Velocitize. So I cover lots of pop culture trends, um, social media trends. I really like that a lot. And then I own Sally on Media, which is a PR firm specializing in content marketing for brands. So anything anybody would use to need to be written, website, um, Wikipedia pages, um, blog content, LinkedIn columns, um, publishing research reports, um, getting media coverage for all that thought leadership, I can do that. So I work on both sides of the media all the time. And Sally wrote this phenomenal article titled, Let There Be Art, where she covered all of the great cultural happenings uh, happening in Greater Fort Lauderdale, um, where she was uh, more focused on highlighting the actual artists and creatives, um, and Andrew and myself and our initiatives to cultivate the culture community uh, in Broward County, where you also highlighted Stephanie Layden and Ernest and Sierra with the Talent Mermaids Project and Paola and a lot of great people doing amazing things. So. Kudos to you, we're forever grateful for that, forever grateful for lifestyle and 
and uh, Lori and everybody that uh, on that team for supporting your as well. Um, and my editor, Kevin Kaminsky. Of course, the yes. Story Thank could you, not Kevin. have been possible without. So um, now that you've been down here a little bit, um, and you've gotten to explore uh, the local cultural scene of landscape, have you been pleased? Have you been disappointed? Do you feel there's room to grow? What are your thoughts and takes on the local 954 cultural landscape, from having come from bigger markets and other places? Right. Well, we're going to just touch on a short vignette, which I shared with you earlier. Again, on vacation with my family. What? Uh, well, I was 13. Okay. A long time ago, like the 80s, 90s, late 80s, something like that. Um, I was down here with my parents and their best friends. And Nancy had been a docent here at the museum. It was a storefront back then. And she invited us to go to a lecture at the museum on Picasso. And I was 13 and I didn't really want to go. And I already knew that he was a great painter, but that he was a sexist. And I even called my big sister living in Chicago and I was like, I don't want to go. He's a sexist. You need to go to this lecture on Picasso. Um, fast forward to college, I was a French major and wound up doing a thesis on the Cubists led by Picasso and the French poet, Gio Macarena. So like you, love the convergence of different kinds of art forms and media, uh, but my first real dose of Picasso and his um, you know, talents uh, was here at the museum. So you've asked me if I'm pleased, what have you. Um, again, I sense before moving here, um, you know, that I would find a lot of interesting people. Um, and I also, again, wanted a better, you know, health work balance. Um, I did come here, I mean, to be close to But uh, little by little, I started to find a group of people who I realized if I met individually, they all seemed to know each other. Um, and started to meet a lot of social progressives, um, kind of judgment free zones, people really intelligent. Um, and you know, unlike, say, a New York art scene, you know, so established, um, the Fort Lauderdale art scene is very accessible because it is young yeah. and grassroots and a bit scrappy. And uh, through my journalism, I got to interview people like Doug McCraw and people at ArtServe and, um, you know, all of these places where you and I started to run into each other. Uh, and because of that, experience and seeing again all of these interconnected fashion designers like Phoenix Niwadonk and raw storytelling run by, by Amy Lasco, which I really just purged my soul uh, last July, uh, which is like a dream. Uh, I started to really sense that there were some high level conceptual creative funky people. And then that's what led to my four page uh, spread in lifestyle. Uh, where I interviewed you and Andrew and Doug McCraw, who founded that village and staff lighting, yeah. you know, from this great gallery in Mass District, yep. and all these different players. Uh, and, you know, I pitched that proactively to my editor and I said, listen, I have lived in big cities and I am impressed by this organic nature um, of, of, you know, in our movement. And it turned into um, a large article with a lot of artwork, and, uh, and it just turned into a wonderful thing. And they have a great foundation director there at the magazine, and he just, you know, made my words come to life. Um, and that I mean, did kind of get me on the map here, as a cultural advocate. I think so. And, um, you know, that article has served a great purpose to get people conscious and aware. The lifestyle readers are people that we shared the article with that were able to understand at more of a higher level the cultural landscape beyond and above NSU and the Broward Center for Performing Arts and all the great purposes that, that these institutions uh, that we're sitting in serve. But it's really the local artists and creatives, the boots on the ground folks that are really cultivating the culture community. If you want to see developing, you know, 
the arts in Fiber Village and Cat Village and Mass District. Um, so kudos to you, you know, again for for highlighting that. You also um, joined us for Art Fort Lauderdale, the Art Fair on the Water, and some other experiences we had as part of Fort Lauderdale Art Design Week. What was your experience and what was your take on this new experience for you, having been to many art fairs and, and art degree right. prior? Right, including the Picasso Museum when I was in college writing that thesis, um, and obviously the Met in New York, um, and the Institute of, you know, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, I just loved Art Fort Lauderdale, as I mentioned in the article. Um, you know, I said, where else can you find the four-day art fair on the water uh, in Manchester? You know, my answer was, exactly, no, you know. Uh, and I went and I really was blown away by, you know, the, the, the dozens, the hundreds of artists, um, not only local, uh, which there were many, uh, which is the purpose, but, you know, from French speaking Canada, Italy, um, Obviously, Paris was the obvious AI guys. This is actually some type of, you know, a subject to keep up, talk here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I, I was so moved that I even did a recap video myself because there were so many fantastic photos of paintings and interviews with different people and the mayor. Um, it, was, it was fantastic and very unique. And talk about accessibility to art. You came to one of the uh, after parties we had on the Friday night of the fair in our week at uh, the Ritz Carlton at Burlap Post, where Obvious was there. You talk about accessibility to artists. You were able to approach, interact, and engage with a collective of artists that were this year regarded as Time Magazine's top 50 minds in the world. Um, for free, yeah. you know, and able to pick their brain and have discourse and dialogue with them. I mean, not to say that that couldn't happen at the MoMA or at the Met or at the Art Institute, uh, but... So the fact that Fort Lauderdale has an inclusionary art scene where a local emerging artist could come to an event or a show or a networking event or a creative zen or anything and meet you, myself, or Andrew, form a relationship and be able to get into Art for Art or get into the Choose Night by Four Local Artists Discovery Series or get other opportunities. That's one of the things I like the most about our art scene being inclusionary and open. Um, and I hope that more artists you know, will come uh, to Choose Night by Four and, and contribute and show their works and their work to make this uh, an even greater um, art scene. So one of the things that makes art scenes great are the cultural institutions. Um, we are sitting in one of the most noteworthy ones now. So tell us a little bit about where we are doing this podcast from right now. Fantastic. Okay, so we are here at the NSU Art Museum, Fort Lauderdale, on the corner of Las Olas and Andrews Avenue. And as I mentioned, I became a fan of this museum um, when I was 13. And again, when I moved here, one of the very first things I did in about two weeks of living here, I contacted um, Sebastian Jimenez, who runs the education department here, and said, I want to be a docent. What is a docent? A docent is an art educator. Um, we don't really like to use the word tour guide, although um, one can. Um, we go through 20 hours of training uh, to, you know, it's a 10 week program where we review not only different art periods, but how to engage people at the museum. And one of the philosophies I really like is see, think, wonder. So a docent's job as a volunteer is not to know every piece in the museum. That is what a curator uh, is there for. Our job is to take people around and you know, highlight different aspects of a show. Um, one docent might highlight you know, one thing, and another docent might highlight another thing. The tours might be in different sequences, uh, but to engage the people who come. And uh, when Frank Stella was here, he went, he's traveled around the world. This is an incredible exhibit. And he uses a lot of math and geometry to paint and construct massive pieces of 
of art, um, sculptures, um, although he considers them paintings. But when I would give tours of school children, they were amazed at, again, the connection between math and art and color and how things were mounted on the walls. And the children are great because they will ask questions and they will uh, show their creativity and appreciate creativity because life hasn't squashed their creativity. <laughs> so I really do love um, Docenting. And uh, as somebody who's involved in media and multimedia um, and a writer and somebody who's quite expressive, um, if I wanted to start a docent-led um, new series of content, hence you and I are here. Um, because I believe that docents at their best are brand ambassadors and really care about the museum and the art within. Uh, so that's what I'm doing at the museum. Um, I will tell you that the One East Society is a new program to reach a younger demographic and connect them to the museum. One of the things that occurred in my reporting for the Lifestyle article was that some of the artists themselves didn't feel connected to the museum. And I saw that as um, an opportunity um, as a volunteer at the museum and again, all of my other capacities to try to change that. But then independently, uh, the museum has created the One East Society. Which I am proud to be a card carrying member of. Yeah, absolutely, and so am I. And it is to attract um, millennials, uh, 21 to 40, uh, to entice them to come and share experiences. And the One East Society launch party is Thursday, April 11th, actually at the Dalmar Hotel, which does have a, a connection um, to the museum, uh, to the leadership here at the museum. And uh, we all encourage um, younger people to come because the exhibits here are absolutely exceptional. World class. World class. And um, I like the uh, the way that the program was created for the One East Society by uh, not just getting access to the museum, but also having monthly uh, members of events, networking, tours. We uh, went on a tour of the Entitled Art Fair during Miami Art Week uh, with McKinley and the team. Um, and they've also offered other tours of other uh, art fairs, hoping future art for Lauderdale. <laughs> um, but it's a really great thing. It's a great way to get people involved in the arts. With that being said, why is the A, this museum, important to the community? What purpose does a world-class museum like this serve to its community with this being, you know, the most noteworthy museum in, in Fort Lauderdale? Well, absolutely. It's a great question, and I have a lot of thoughts about mm -hmm. that. So, the 60, this is the 60th anniversary of the museum, and under you know, curator Bonnie um, Clearwater and, uh, and Barbara, the um, assistant curator, they have, um, they are showcasing you know, a 60 year collection um, within the museum. And it is called Remember to React, which is a very important uh, saying. You know, what are we supposed to react to? You know, we react to things every day to, to read, to stimuli, to a, a bee that's flying around, you know, what are we reacting to? And an artist named Jenny Holzer created literally a plaque that looks like a new smoking sign, and we'll show a photo of that later. Um, in the 80s, during the, the AIDS crisis, you know, remember to react. I mean, there are people suffering, there is vision, there is flame, and that is the name of this exhibit. And the museum has done a fantastic job of not necessarily saying, this is one period and this is another period. It, they have purposely um, created an exhibit that almost meanders, but it makes you think and react. 
And there is a lot of reflection on immigration, trauma, war, uh, and then happiness within this museum that I think anybody, regardless of age, uh, should pay attention to. And there is a depth here um, that would really enable the intellectually curious to come and ponder um, and walk out better. And there is a, a Haitian installation, um, you know, just off the um, admissions counter um, that tells the story of Haitian migration to Miami. There is a fantastic installation, again, we'll show you a photo of that, um, by a young African artist who lived his life as a refugee in Burundi and Rwanda, and now he's in South Africa. And the museum commissioned an entire installation uh, where he has depicted his trauma and obstacles to being a refugee. And then there's another painting um, by an uh, uh, artist in Germany born in 1971, which was really the first German um, generation to not be part of World War II. And that generation of, of, of Xers, if you will, have really carried a lot of guilt about the war because their parents grew up in it or they were in it or, you know, etc. And um, you know, he says that the, that the only thing that doesn't cause harm in the world is art. So he's up there deconstructing propaganda using photos of Hitler and the you know, Nazi cross and taking that iconography and, and ripping it up. I mean, there is just so much going on in the museum um, that I think anybody, once they know about it, um, would want to come. And even the African collection, when you think about 20th century African art and sculpture, and then realize that Picasso um, adopted those images and was appropriated, inspired by, depending on your point of view, uh, used a lot of these African masks um, as he started his foray into Cubism, especially with the name of Davin uh, So if you start to put all of these pieces together, you can not only look at art as it has evolved, but the human condition as it always is, which is messy. And not and so this 60 years of collecting, remember to react, um, kind of highlights you know, some of the exhibits throughout the six years of the museum. This wall that we're sitting in front of, of story tells um, some of the progressions and exhibits. Um, why don't you highlight, I know you haven't been here as long, but why don't you highlight, you mentioned Frank Sella, um, some of the noteworthy exhibits that the museum has featured here. Well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, even again, as a tourist, you know, I, uh, you know, I saw King Tut, I saw yeah. the Vatican exhibit, um, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm a former recovering Catholic, but, um, you know, it was a, a great, I mean, world-class exhibit. I mean, the fact that they had King Tut, um, I mean, through the years there have been massive, uh, massive exhibits. Um, Black and Julian Schnabel, yeah. Anthony Kiefer, yeah. um, the Cobra exhibit, yeah. uh, I believe they had, a Basquiat exhibit at some point, I'm not seeing it on the walls here, but really world-class stuff that people would travel and do travel uh, around the world for. Now, with all of that being said, if they still aren't picking up on what we're dishing out, why don't you tell us in your humble, professional, personal opinion, why is art important? Oh my gosh. Um... You know, art endures. It endures more than the guy who was coming to on Wall Street, uh, making money for a lot of rich people. You know, look at the you know, hand paintings in caves in Spain from 40,000 years ago. I learned about that on the BBC, and one of the major points of that show was that 40,000 years ago, those people had the same mind, the same cognitive abilities, and they use handprints in red to leave a mark. And we are still thinking about that. And obviously the Cape paintings in France and the of horses and you know, Native American art, you can go on and on and on. 
you know, look at Shakespeare, when you look at um, you know, different editions of the Bible and parchment and, and Roman art and glassware, it lives on. And like, like the artist needs to see Germany, who says you are you no know, harm. I mean, everybody lives on this planet and life is hard. Life is great. Life is fun. We all have our, our demons and art in all forms, whether it's photography, video, painting, sculpture, film, books, poetry, reminds us they're all connected on this planet. Amen. Beautifully said. Um, art is uh, art is a problem solver. Art is a storyteller. Art is uh, history. Is our archives. Art is expression. Art is everything. I mentioned to you earlier, and I mentioned this to a few folks. Art has given me more in life, not monetarily, but enrichment and experiences. Um, without ever having been an artist, without ever having created artists undoubtedly changed my life, un undoubtedly has changed the landscape of our community, um, and it's a beautiful thing, and, and, and we're not here with any ulterior motive or agenda besides promoting and supporting and cultivating the arts, and hoping to get you or your friend or family member, your neighbor, your co-worker, whoever, engaged in the arts, because from our travel, the great, well posted cities that we've been to, the New York, Chicago, the Austin, Nashville, and so on and so forth, what makes those places great? The art. Correct. Sure they have great architecture, and sure they have great buildings and developments and other economic and other uh, important pieces as well, but, um, you know, obviously there's no shortage of great cultural institutions in those cities, um, and that's where many artists and creatives go to pursue their craft, to pursue their passion. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again, so I'm blue in the face. Our local artists and creatives shouldn't have to go other places to pursue their craft and be full-time artists. They should be able to be full-time artists here in yes. Broward County. Well, I am gonna just give a final plug Please. to Mass District, which is music and art south of Sunrise, named by Steph Leiden. Uh, Steph is all of 32. She is a die-hard, hard-working artist and advocate whom I met and befriended um, through the interviewing for that uh, story that you um, graciously mentioned. Yep. And last week, as part of the art walks, she had 14 live painters. And I did some video interviews. Um, one was about depression and suicide. One was by an Ecuadorian artist who painted images of his home in Ecuador, coupled with um, the topography of Fort Lauderdale. I, there were just people all over the place, and the artwork was amazing, and the energy was so vibrant. And that is due to one person. And if you think about getting business support for that gallery, which attracted so many people off the street, well, think about the different smaller institutions and activists who, with a meager donation from a big company, you know, a couple of brands would make a huge difference. A couple of hundred. That gallery, but yeah. you know, even if you started off small, yeah. you know, you know, you you still, but absolutely, you want a Anything. couple of hundred. Anything. But you know, that's another thing. I'm on the cultural arts committee at the Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce, and that is one of our. It is our core mission is to entice and encourage. Um, and almost you know, demand that business come out and put their money where their mouth is and support the arts because if we do get a younger demographic, people want something to do. As fun as the elbow room is, and trust me, I love it, we have to have something cultural to do. And that's what makes a city vibrant and able to withstand lots of other things, like a recession and depression, you know. Museums are, I mean, gosh darn it, when we had the government shutdown, this museum was free to um, government workers and a guest. I mean, just think about how gracious that was. And the arts matter.
incredible and, and I'm glad that you said that without me having to prompt it because I have the saying that when these 20,000 pound units go up, if there aren't things to do aside from drink and go to the beach, we're going to have real problems if the real estate developers don't hit their occupancy levels, we're going to have cost of living adjustments, rent increases, we're going to have real problems in Fort Lauderdale if we are not able to retain the talent that we're able to attract. Yes, of course people want to move here because we have great weather and the proximity from the airport to the downtown to the beach and we have tons of bars. Yes, those are all well and good things and do I go to the bars? Of course I go to the bars, but um, is that enough to sustain the amount of the influx of folks that we're going to have at a higher income level, at a higher participation level, at a higher culture level, they're going to need things to do. We're not making this up saying support the arts because we're going to benefit. We're probably not the ones that are going to benefit. <laughs> we're doing this for free. Right. We're doing this. We're doing this I could be swimming in the beach right in the ocean right we're now. We're doing this altruistically because it's the right thing to do. Andrew and I self-funded and started an art fair where Andrew pulled out over $50,000 of his own money from his piggy bank wow. to fund an art fair to better the community with the sole mission and purpose from day one of putting Fort Lauderdale on the art world as, a desti as an art world map as a destination of viewing interactive art, period. And we feel, as evidenced by the Forbes editorial this year and some of the other great press that we've gotten from Sally and other great writers, that we're successful in doing that. And now people, it is on the art world map, as Fort Lauderdale is a destination to view and interact with art outside of the great museum and the Broward Center Performing Arts and Museum of Discovery and Science and all the other great things, the Girls Club, Stonewall, Art Serif, so on and so forth. So this is, all of this is serving a greater purpose. All of this is our steps that need to be taken if we, we, we all say we want this to be a world-class community. But you can't just say that. You actually have to do things. And we are dedicated to doing things that have a tremendous amount of respect to you for taking, appreciate that, taking time out of your life on the weekend. There's plenty of other things you could be doing, but you decided to come here with me, do this podcast from the museum for free to highlight and, and showcase and promote the cultural institutions, the people that you know and love, and I, I give you a ton of credit and respect for that. And um, I, I wanted to, I wanted to just kind of piggyback off of, um, you know, what you were saying. It, it, you know, the business community really does need to support it. I mean, the way that I've always understood it. And please email me, call me, comment if I'm wrong. But it was Walter Freeman and Tony Goldman and George Perez and the Craig Robbins of the world that back in the day when Miami fact was falling apart was had gone past the cocaine cowboys stage and it was a shithole paradise lost a famous article uh, the cover story I encourage you watch cocaine cowboys and find out for yourself the real history of Miami of when it came out of the cocaine cowboys eras and Miami, nobody wanted to be on the South Beach. You were stepping over homeless bodies. It smelled like piss everywhere you walked. What brought Miami out of that time? It was the art. It was Art Basel, humble beginnings in shipping containers on the beach in 2002, because they couldn't do it in 2001, because it was right after 9-11, and then growing, moving into the convention center. And what did the growth and success of Art Basel create? Wynwood, and we, there is no arguing and no doubt in the world that Wynwood has truly contributed to the revitalization of Miami, becoming a world-class, well-cultured community, the largest outdoor public art museum in the world, the arguably the street art capital of the world right now. Um, and Andrew will tell you, if you have a conversation with him, he used to rent warehouses in Wynwood for $100 a month where five artists would chip in 20 bucks, get a thousand square foot space, collaborate and create together artist collectives, the way that it was in the Basquiat and Keith Haring and Kenny Sharp days. And it was those artists and creatives and those experiences and the contributions of Moish Mana and Tony Goldman and, all, and Tony Cho and all these people 
that made Winwood great. And what were their contributions? It wasn't, hey, that's a great piece of art, pat on the back. It was monetary contributions from the business communities. And look at these people. Do you think they didn't benefit from their contributions? George Perez? <laughs> the Golden Family? Craig Robbins in the Design District? Walter Brayman? You ever heard of the Brayman Auto Dealerships? <laughs> so we're not like speculating that like- Well, the auto nation does work. 100%, God, God bless you, Mike Jackson, great piece over there. But we're not just going out on a limb here that if you as a business owner or even as an individual in the community support the arts monetarily- It's the grassroots that need sure. to help. Yep. It's the Art Attack Gallery in Mass District. It's you know, the, the smaller guys and gals yes. who are you know, really trying to win up. Yes. And, and also, we're still self-funding our Lario. We did not get a nickel from the city or county this year. Um, for whatever reason, you can ask them. <laughs> um, God bless them. We did get a proclamation from, from Dean, the Trancellus, the mayor, and, and Commissioner Steve Glassman, which we appreciate. But that doesn't help our production costs of producing a fair that benefits the community. So um, we appreciate the help in any way. We will be glad to get a like or a follow on social media. We're glad for you to share and tell a friend to tell a friend. But ultimately, it's monetary contributions that will grow not just the art scene, but will literally help revitalize Fort Lauderdale, put us on the map as a world-class, well-cultured community. I'm gonna say it's on blue in the face. And these are the conversations that we have to have to make impact and change. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Where can they follow you on social media? Well, on Facebook, I am um, Sally O'Dowd. On Instagram, I am at Sally O'Dowd, S-A-L-L-Y-O-D-O-W-D. On LinkedIn, I am Sally Ann O'Dowd, S-A-L-L-Y-A-N-N-O-D-O-W-D. Uh, and you Which can it? my uh, corporate case study and PR communications website is sallyonmedia.net. And the site that uh, showcases all of my creative work, my e-zines on uh, human rights, free speech rights, um, on the trend that businesses and culture must work together for the common good, my poetry, um, my blog articles, all of that is on sallyodowd.com. And please reach out. Um, hire her, contract her, engage her. Um, she's great. She really produces uh, quality product, and quality work. Uh, her writing is phenomenal. She's been began contributing to Choose 954. Um, so we really appreciate that. Um, you can follow me personally at EvanSnow13 on Instagram. I'm an open book. Don't hesitate to reach out. There's no bad questions at Choose 954. Uh, at our Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Art and Design Week as well. A couple things to look forward to coming up here. Uh, Sally mentioned the Art Walk in Flagler Village, which encompasses Bad Village and Mass District, the Hive in Flagler Uptown. We begin leading guided curated tours of the Art Walk, which our Fort Lauderdale Art Walk is the last Saturday night of the month from 6 to 10 p.m. Um, it's our greatest community event of the month. It is the only recurring community event of the month where four to 5,000 people come together over our shared passions of art, culture, food, music, so on and so forth, uh, where the galleries stay open late, the warehouses have activations and installations in them, there's food trucks, live art, live music, and this is the platform where our artists and creatives go to display, exhibit, and sell their crafts. So this is where you'll find our local dreamers, doers, passion pursuers, artists and creatives. Once a month, they can't afford a long-term lease for a retail storefront. So they hop up at the art walk for $50 or $100, whatever the fee is at the stage that they activate, to sell their craft. We hope that you'll um, come out. We have began leading this guided tour. Uh, it's about three hours. We start in Mass District, we take the Sun Trolley, over to Fat Village. I walk people through some of the artist studios, some of the vendors, some of the um, installation spaces, and uh, have the artists explain their work. I talk a little bit about the importance of the art as we discussed today. I talk about some of the backstories, um, and you really get a chance to engage and, and have discourse in, in conversation with the artists. So you can find that. We have a monthly Fort Lauderdale Art Walk page with the new Choose 954 guided tour. 
Eventbrite, uh, Facebook, you can find us on there. The $20 suggested donation, I'm taking time out of my life to not only do the tour, but market it, promote it, I run Facebook ads, all these things, you know, do cost money. Um, so we appreciate the support, whatever you can give, it's great. Um, I'm also actually going to be leading a tour of the Hollywood Art Walk, which is another great art walk, which is the third Saturday night of the month, starting in May, um, which is in downtown Hollywood, which will follow the downtown Hollywood mural project guided tour by the project manager and curator and artist, Jill Weisberg. Downtown Hollywood mural project has 27 world-class murals, artists ranging from the London Police, Kenny Sharp, Eduardo, Eduardo Moranje, um, and local artists as well, like Stephanie Melissa. Um, it's the third Saturday night of every month. The guided mural tour of the Downtown Hollywood Mural Project starts at 6 p.m., goes about to 7 p.m. My tour will probably start just a little bit after that, maybe like 7.30. I'll take people once again through the galleries, the vendors, and, and the, the people that make the art walks in the art community great. Um, if you want to uh, get some inspiration, and, and actually uh, it was an event very similar where I initially got my inspiration, we host a monthly breakfast lecture series and many TED Talks for the creative community, but everybody's welcome and everyone's creative, called Creative Zen. Um, it's a free event, we include uh, coffee, breakfast bites, and there's a networking component to it as well, where we bring a thought-provoking leader, artist, entrepreneur, Zen, mastery coach, whoever, to share their thought-provoking, inspiring story. This Friday, April the 12th, at the new General Provision Space in downtown Fort Lauderdale, we are gonna have one of the people I admire and respect the most in the world, Ivan Dynamo De Jesus, the creator of Action Club, uh, share his thought-provoking story. Action Club is a, um, it's a mini mastermind group. It's an accountability um, support group for anybody. If you have an idea, uh, a, a startup, a dream, or even if you don't have an idea, we literally sit around the table and help people cultivate their ideas and support them. Uh, Dynamo started this over seven years ago in Miami. Uh, was gracious enough to help us start a chapter up here in Fort Lauderdale about two years ago. It's had a profound impact on my life. It helped start raw storytelling. It helped start so many other things. So he's going to share his story about that. Action Club is every other Tuesday at the other general provision working space in Fat Village. It's spelled A-X-E-N. Uh, Dynamo is his real name and it's Creative Zen. All of this you can find on Choose 954. Uh, we hope you'll join us for raw storytelling, which is always the night before. Creative Zen, Raw Storytelling is the second Thursday night of the month at 8 p.m. Creative Zen is the second Friday morning of the month at 8.30, doors open, talk starts at 9, you're out of there by 10. Um, if you need reasons to tell your boss why you're going to miss an hour from work, you've got that. Anything else, you find us on Choose 954, So Far Sound, Thousand Mermaid Project, all those great things. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm an open book, she's an open book. We can help write and tell your story. Um, please support the arts and um, Dave the Reefs, and uh, we'll see you in the next time. Okay, ciao.